Now let's take a look at API versioning. And this is something that I probably could have set up way back in the first video, although I don't think it would have made much sense for me, for me to explain back then, because yeah, uh, anybody who's new to building APIs might have been a little bit lost. Although hopefully now that you know how to set up an API, this should make a little bit more sense to you. So. Uh, if we take a look at what's getting returned from our API at the moment, I'm just going to have to get into th the theory of why we would use an API version. And hopefully this will make sense to you. So just bear with me for about uh, 40 seconds. But uh, yeah, if we take a look at our current keys that are being returned, uh, we've got phone number, first name, last name, things like that. Now, let's just say I wanted to change phone to be phone underscore number, or I wanted to change phone to be mobile underscore number. Well, see, that sounds like an incredibly simple, small change. But remember, the point of an API is that uh, a mobile app or a front end of a website can both connect to this API or, you know, other websites can actually be connecting to our API. So this is like a central point of information. And the moment we change a key like that, even if it is really, really simple, that means that any other app or any other website out there that's making use of our API is going to break. So yeah, you kind of want to stay away from changing keys like this. But if you ever have to, then um, yeah, you want to make sure that you've got API versioning set up so that you can always keep an old version of your API running until you've switched everyone over to the new version of your API. If you just switch everyone over um, and all their websites break or all their apps break because you change something in the API, trust me, you're gonna have a lot of unhappy people, unhappy clients around you. So let's take a look at actually setting some API versioning up. So let's go back over to my editor. And basically what I want to do here is I want to take this person controller and I want to put that in a versioned folder. And then I also am going to have to do the same thing for my roots. I'm going to need to change these. And then I'm going to have to change um, a new resource collection. Well, in fact, we can probably use this one. But when we move over to version two, that's going to have to change a little bit. So uh, let's take a look at, first of all, moving this controller. So I'm going to go back over to the terminal here and I'm going to type in PHP artisan make and let's make a new controller over here. And I'm going to put this in API v1 for version one. And then this is going to be the person controller. Great. So now that that's created, if I go back over to my project, I should have a new person controller over here. Uh, and the only reason why I did that from the command line was because then I didn't have to make these fol folders. And also my namespace and my import is in here correctly. So that way nothing's going to break in this video, hopefully. Right, so now what I need to do is just copy all of the code from our old controller. And we're going to paste that in our new controller. But yeah, take a note that I didn't copy the namespace or the... Uh, the controller import. And now I'm going to just copy these three here, which are the model and resource imports. And I'm going to paste those in here as well. Great. So now that I've done that, I can probably get rid of my old controller. So let's just uh, delete that. Right. And if I save this now and I go back over to Postman and I try to send a request, this should break because right now we can't actually access or we're trying to access the wrong controller. So uh, let's just set this up so that we are accessing the right controller. And I'm going to change this to API v1. And we'll do the exact same thing over here. So API v1. All right. And if we save this, now we should be able to access the correct controller again. So we should have stuff uh, returning back. Okay. The next thing I want to do is uh, set up a root prefix. And that's because whenever you are using API versioning, uh, you're going to have to know, have some way of your front end knowing um, which version of the API to use. Now, there are s different ways to do this. I mean, you could um, return a, a header in here with an API version number or something like that. but those types of things get a little bit complicated. So one of the simplest ways to do this is to just in your root 
have a v1 or a v2 v3 prefix whatever version you're on right so if i add in this prefix and i save this route and hit send well oops this breaks and that's because uh, we don't have a root with that prefix set up just yet. So let's come back here to our API roots, and I'm gonna copy all of these out, and I'm going to create a new root here, and this is gonna have a prefix of v1, and I'm going to group these as well, and we'll just put that into a function, right? And now, after we've ended that off with a semicolon, we can paste these back in here. And so now, whenever we try to access v1 person, we should be accessing the v1 controller and everything should be working. So let's come back here and hit send and there we go. Um, this is now working. So of course, we're gonna have to make that same change for all of our routes because people should currently be broken, but the moment I add in v1, uh, this should work again. Great. So of course you can go ahead and update all of your routes. But now that I've actually done all of this, let's take a look at what it might look like when we add in a version two of our API. So let's let's make a change that could be potentially breaking, right? So what I wanna do is go back over to my command line and let's php artisan make, and let's make a new resource and let's put this in v2. Uh, and let's put this, well, let's call this person resource. So hit enter. And now some of you keen eyed viewers will know we've got a person resource here, which is our version one. And then we've got a uh, person resource here, which is in our version two. So currently this is taking, or the version one is taking everything that's in our database and just converting that to an array. But let's make version two actually perform some transformation. So let's get rid of this line here and let's return an array. And let's make this return a full name instead of a first name. And this can be uh, equal to this uh, first underscore name plus we'll concatenate. So let's just con concatenate a space and a dot over here. Uh, and let's also concatenate the this underscore last, or this last underscore name, right? So let's return that. And then let's also do something like mobile number, and that's going to be equal to this phone. Okay. And uh, now if we save this, this is a change that if we had done it in version one would be a potential breaking change. So let me just show you that by, well, actually, you know what? I don't need to show you, but of course, yeah, this is going to have potentially broken our first version if we did this in the first version. So luckily we've set this up in version two. So all we need to do now is add in a version two controller and some version two roots. So let's, uh, let's go back over to the terminal here and let's, PHP artisan make a new controller and let's add that into API version two. And this is going to be person controller for version two, right? Uh, and if I go back over to version two and uh, let's open up this controller over here, let's create a new public, public function for show. And this is going to also return a person resource, but we're gonna make sure that we're pulling in person resource version two. And then we'll open up our parentheses here and just return the new person resource uh, of person. And of course we need to make sure that we're accepting a person. Uh, well, let's come back here. Make sure that we actually import that a person with the type of person. Okay, so if we save all of this stuff now, um, this should be set up as a show root for version two. So all we need to do now is come back over here and set up a root for version two as well. And in fact, I actually only want one root here. So let's create a new root group here. Let's prefix that with uh, v2 and let's group that 
in a function. End that off with a semicolon. And let's just copy, copy that one. But I only want a show root over here. So show. And this can be version two. Okay. So now we should be calling version two in our root now that I've called this. So if I come back over to uh, our postman and I access version two from this root and hit send, well, oops, looks like we've got an error. Um, okay, so let's see what I've done wrong here. I've set up a version two prefix, set up a controller to call version two. I've got version two set up here as a controller, which should be returning version two as a resource, which should also have this set up. Ah, sorry. <laughs> okay, I see my mistake. So this is uh, accessing a group. Um, so let's change that back to person one because we haven't set up a uh, a list yet for version two. We've only set up a show root for version two. So we need to make sure that we're accessing this on show. And there we go. We can see that uh, I now have um, version two set up and working with a full name and a mobile number being returned. So we have slightly different keys here. But this means that our API currently has a version one root which still works and a version two root, which also still works at the moment. Uh, and that's where version API versioning comes into play, right? Whenever you wanna make a change that could be potentially breaking of how you actually want to return data back to people, um, you wanna make sure that you always have a backwards compatible old version and a new version that you can migrate everyone to. Now, I hope this tutorial was helpful and I'll see you guys next time. And that is the end of the video. So if you made it this far, I'm going to assume that whatever I was teaching you now was helpful. So I just want to say, uh, if you did make it to the, this point of the video, subscribe and check me out on social media, especially Instagram. So all of my social media is on screen now, and I'll see you guys next time.